What's up, everybody? It's Lexi D here. In this episode, I'm going to be walking you all through a feeling I've been having that actually has a name for it. I did some light research and it has a name for it. And the name is Languishing. And just sharing with you all my experience with this feeling. This is something that I would say is kind of unfamiliar to me. I am someone who is usually pretty good about naming my feelings, understanding what's driving them, you know, understanding what's the triggers and, you know, and sometimes that is enough to resolve whatever it is, right? To just sit in the feeling and not have to do anything about it. But in this case, this was a feeling that I can't say that I've really experienced before Or if I have, it's been quite some time. And so where did this all begin? So 4th of July weekend, I had a lot of activities lined up with friend groups and I was anticipating it was going to be a good weekend. The weekend prior, I had similarly some things, um, a lot of social activities And one of those social activities led to me hosting friends at my place. And afterwards, I felt so fulfilled and just like, I just felt happy. You know, I felt I felt really good. I was reminded of, hey, there are I am. I was reminded that I am an extrovert, like, you know, I think the pandemic especially has kind of made me feel like maybe I'm an an introvert, but that's really been a byproduct of being forced into solitary um, situations, right? Like situations where situations will arise. Okay, so (laughs) anytime I hear situations and the fact that Usher has been really big right now, um, that comes to mind. But there have been there's been a lot of time where we've all been forced to be on our own, right? And I've learned to love my alone time, but then also being reminded of how good it feels to hang out with people and connect with people, like connect with people I know. Um, it was just, a, it was a great feeling. And so what I was anticipating the weekend prior was those similar feelings, was that I was going to feel fulfilled from hanging out with people and connecting and all of that. But what I found was during one of those social activities. So I was at a friend's place and we were getting ready to go out to um, a party at this hotel. And I was really excited. It just seemed like the vibe was going to be good. But at some point, there was an energy drop for me. And I felt like this emptiness come over me. It was kind of like a, I even struggle now with how to describe it, but it just felt like an energy drop. And I wasn't exactly sure where it came from or how it came about. And then throughout the week, it became like this slow drip that progressively became more dominant in my life. So we went to the party and the party wasn't really what was expected, but you know, we made the most of it. I was going to say we made the best. (laughs) Don't you hate when you do that sometimes with words, like you join them together, (laughs) made the most of it, (laughs) made the best and the most of it. There we go. And, you know, I got home the next day. I had another activity lined up and I really questioned even going honestly because I still just wasn't feeling good. I wasn't feeling the way I would have liked to feel going into that situation. But my thinking was, you know what, I'm going to go hopefully have a good time and really kind of just hoping, having hope that that situation would leave me feeling fulfilled as I mentioned the weekend prior and all of those social activities. And that just wasn't the case. I I just found myself with this indifference kind of being a cloud over me. 
everyone was nice. Everyone was kind. It was cool. It's just I felt disconnected from the present moment. And I really couldn't pinpoint why. Pinpoint why. And then going into the week, just that same sentiment, that same undercurrent of like, I don't know exactly what this is. If someone asked me how I feel and I feel comfortable enough to share with them, my feeling was blah. It was meh. It was just like indifference. Just I'm here, I'm existing, and there's not really anything that is placing a spark within me, but there's also not things that are kind of, there also aren't things that are necessarily weighing me down. So I just kind of felt like I was floating. And it reminds me for some reason of, I can't, I don't know the artist behind this painting, but it's a painting where there's this man who, he has his hands on his ears and it's like, he looked like the painting has a lot of swirls in it. This is probably a terrible description. If I can find a link to that photo, I will leave it in the show notes, but it just that photo for some reason embodies how I felt it was like you can tell the person in the photo looks like they're screaming and it's like a silent scream is what I felt like I was like what was happening within me I was scrolling on TikTok and there was just a lot of mindless activity going on scrolling on TikTok scrolling on Instagram you know, and just switching between that and y'all, I started watching Love After Lockup again, which I told myself I like, okay, I have standards when it comes to reality TV. Love After Lockup is one of those shows that I've told myself we cannot watch this. This is absolutely basura. Like we, we, it's going to start seeping into your psyche Girl, you have got to stop watching this level of mess. I've already struggled with if I should still be watching 90 Day Fiance. But at this point, I'm kind of becoming more and more convinced through Reddit forums that 90 Day Fiance may be fake. And Love After Lockup might be fake too. But it's 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 too far left for me. Um, See, now I'm losing my train of thought here. So I found myself in what felt like a bottomless pit of just constant distraction. And then, and then in the background was this silent scream. I actually had kind of like a mental breakdown, I would say a few months ago where I was sitting in my, I was sitting in my office at home and I had just finished work for the day. I remember I was looking up at my ceiling and I just thought out loud, like, what am I doing? What is this all for? What does any of this mean? Like, where am I going? Like, what just, I feel like I'm just existing. And I remember calling my mom and I was in tears because I just felt like, what is all this for? Like, what is the purpose? It definitely reminded me of when I've had a quarter life crisis before. So when I was between around the ages of 22, 23, I had a quarter life crisis, which if you're not familiar with that is, it's a time in your life when you, it's kind of like a midlife crisis, but it happens earlier in life where you start asking yourself these existential questions of what's my life's purpose? What am I doing? What does all this matter? And so it was just very, a lot of existential questions that were happening in that moment. I don't know exactly what triggered that, but I do know that it was something that has definitely set me into motion around thinking about how my day-to-day contributes to my life and what I do want to do with my life and what things do fulfill me. I am fortunate enough to say that there are quite a bit of areas in my life where I feel like I'm stable. And because of that, there's nothing for me really to like pour a lot of myself into. And so that has led to a lot of downtime. And I think that that could be part of the reason of just feeling this blah 
feeling. It's not like I'm feeling blah and I'm not going to the gym and I'm not showing up for work and I'm not showing up for my friends. Like I'm doing these things, right? But amongst other things, like I'm doing those things amongst other things that are good for me, but I'm still just feeling this emptiness. So I did some light research on this topic and what I came across was a term called languishing. And I feel just even without knowing the exact definition, I felt like that embodies what I'm feeling. Like just kind of this slow drip of indifference, of sadness. And, you know, I questioned if this could be a form of depression. I've never been clinically diagnosed with depression before, Um, but I questioned that. And that kind of made me nervous, too, to think about because depression is serious and it has serious implications. Um, from the light research I've done, I don't I don't think I am. I, I have depression at this point. Um, but this languishing, this term for the feelings I have been having or the lack thereof, because that's that's the the conflict is like what I'm feeling is sometimes no feeling. You know, and just kind of like, like I said, existing and just feeling like I'm aimlessly floating around and like there's nothing really that I'm targeting towards. So that has been rough. I've tried walking through it with one of my close friends and, you know, even just being asked that question of, well, what's happened and why do you think this has happened? You know, when I did the research on languishing, from what I can tell, it's something that happens. It's a feeling that accumulates over time, or at least that's how it resonates with me as a feeling that has accumulated over time. So there is not one single event or even couple of events that necessarily triggers it. It's just something that's kind of been floating in the background and it feels like it's rising up um, to the surface at this point. So I will say, thankfully, there's been some things that I am considering doing to help me see if it's going to help with this and just address this feeling. One of those things is a gratitude journal. I have tried, excuse me, I have not tried (laughs) I was going to say I've tried to do a gratitude journal consistently. I have, I've had like ebbs and flows with it where at one period, at one time I was doing my gratitude journal pretty consistently and then I fell off. And when I think about the feelings that I would have after doing a page in the gratitude journal, those are feelings I want to evoke within me again, which as I'm sure you can guess, How do I feel after doing a gratitude journal? I feel more gratitude, you know, and gratitude is something that is free, but it is something that is also very, a very fulfilling emotion. So I want to try out gratitude. I also want to do a social media fast. At one point I was off of Instagram for two years. I haven't had a Facebook in at least five years now. No regrets about that. But I have found, especially with TikTok, y'all, like, I will be up late into the evenings and I already count myself in as a night owl, but it's getting to the point where it's just like, I want to go to sleep earlier, but there's something in me that like holds me back from doing that. It's almost like this. I don't, I don't even know how to describe it. It's just being on the apps has definitely contributed to me being up longer than I want to be. And I also feel like it may contribute to what feels like this sense of aimlessness because ultimately consumption in that form, overconsumption of anything for me just doesn't feel good. And so I want to see about doing a fast from social media for for a set period of time and just seeing how I feel from there. I also need to start praying again. Um, Something I've noticed before is that if I let even three days go by without like a good quality prayer, 
things start feeling off. And I don't know, I can't re- recall the last time that I've had like a good, good quality prayer. So I definitely feel overdue for that. So these are some things that I am going to try out, see how it goes, you know, report back here, give you all my results, you know, and some things for you all to consider is if you resonate with any of what I've shared here, this feeling of blah, this feeling of meh, you know, is of course, first asking yourself where you think that this could be, um, deriving from, but also on top of that, being reminded of the things that have sparked joy in you before and finding ways to pull yourself towards that. What kind of feels sad about, about this is that it's like you, you don't even feel, it's like a lack of motivation to do the things that do bring you joy. So it's almost like a chore to bring yourself towards things that will bring you joy, which feels like such a crazy thing to say. But that's also where, as I mentioned before, the whole like indifference piece comes in where you just kind of feel like, eh, I don't really care, you know. Um, But, you know, I, I would like to think that there's hope out here. I know that feelings are temporary. And while I can't recall a time that I've experienced this particular feeling, I can definitely recall times where I've experienced unpleasant feelings and I've been able to, um, to work through them. So with that, thank you all for listening and I'll talk to you all in the next one.